On Sunday afternoon, I noticed the Moore's Law's Dead Discord starting to blow up from a few leaked slides on video cards. It showed some interestingly, at least interesting to me, vague Zen 4 info. There was the usual stuff, 5 nanometer core chiplet, 6 nanometer I.O. chiplet, DDR5, PCIe 5.0, integrated graphics, yada, yada, yada. But then there were also these very vague statements like greater than a 15% single threaded uplift and 5 gigahertz plus maximum boost. And I am sorry, but this just immediately screamed to me sandbagging or something similar to that because Look, I don't mean to suggest that AMD is always like underestimating how they're going to do or that you should always expect sandbagging. But guys, they've literally already shown over five months ago a Zen 4 CPU, an earlier engineering sample than what was shown today, running all core turbo boost above five gigahertz. And so I guess to put it another way, my point is this when it comes to that slide I found it very unlikely that AMD was going to release a Zen 4 CPU that had the same boost clocks as 6 nanometer Rembrandt. So, honestly, when I saw that slide, I was like, AMD isn't saying anything new here. That's not how they usually talk. Even when it's early and they give vague information, it's usually like a firm, at least, IPC number. So... Yeah, honestly, when I saw this, I went into the Computex presentation going, oh, I think they're going to do some big demo, frankly, because a couple people told me they would, but also that they weren't going to show final specs yet because they don't want to. And they didn't. They did show a Zen 4 CPU running with boost clocks above 5.5 gigahertz. You can see that those Zen 4 cores are running around 5.5 gigahertz with slight variations during gameplay. We designed Zen 4 to run significantly faster than our previous generation, and that increase in frequency can translate into a smoother gaming experience. And while this is just one example, we're really excited for gamers to get their hands on our Ryzen 7000 series. But we know our fans use Ryzen for more than just gaming. On the right is the Ryzen 7000 system, and the left is a competitor system. Both CPUs are 16 cores and rendering a custom image of our next-gen Ryzen desktop CPU, with Blender maxing out the core and thread count of those processors to complete the render as quickly as possible. As you can see, the Ryzen 7000 system completes the process 31% faster, which means creators spend less time waiting and much more time creating. And honestly, I believe what AMD's goal was today was to make sure people know that if you're considering buying Alder Lake now or thinking of getting Zen 4 later, you know that Zen 4 is a decent performance uplift over Alder Lake, but AMD doesn't want Intel to know how much better it is yet. So again, what was AMD to do? Simple. Make it clear that Zen 4 is at least around a Zen 3 performance increase or more. So anyone considering waiting to upgrade knows that if they wait, it won't be worse than Alder Lake. So their investors know, guys, hey, hey, this won't be worse than Alder Lake. In fact, we're going to announce the exact performance level it will at least be at to, if you go look at old benchmarks, at least tie the 12900K. That's all AMD did is say, hey, we're at least going to match the 12900K and then show a few benchmarks at the end so that people who actually get what's going on understand that AMD is sandbagging. But they don't want I Intel to be able to completely quantify everything. They want Intel to know they're going to beat Alder Lake. They want gamers to know they're going to have something really good at gaming. They're hitting 5.5 gigahertz just like the 12900KS is. But they don't want you to know the total single-threaded performance, the total multi-threading performance increase on average. Because if they were to say that, then Intel would know how to price Raptor Lake, what performance levels to target, how much to overclock it, and they lose some competitiveness. So what you're looking at is a game of poker between AMD and Intel's Raptor Lake until they know they have to announce everything. Again, especially because Raptor Lake's almost certainly launching before Zen 4, so AMD might as well wait to see how Raptor Lake's priced so they can decide how to price Zen 4. And, um, well, yeah. That was just the most important thing to talk about in today's presentation. I've actually got a few other things to say, but first, an ad from a sponsor. What are you so worried about? How many squirrels are out there? Oh wait, that's right, you don't even know how to count. You could really use 
Brilliant. Brilliant is an online interactive learning platform that uses fun, hands-on, or even perhaps pause-on learning to teach you courses from mathematics, computer science, and STEM, and is tailored in a way that is actually, well, again, fun and memorable. You can learn subjects from mechanical engineering, if you want to brush up on things you learned in college like I did, or you can even teach yourself more advanced mathematics that you never got a chance to learn in your career up until now. So whether it's brushing up on everyday things that you think you should know, or remembering things that you learned in college, like the fundamentals of computer science. Brilliant can keep you sharp or help you develop new skills for your career. And the best part is it's free to start in waiting for you. Join over 11 million people who are already learning on the Brilliant platform with a special offer today. Head to Brilliant at the link in the description or on screen to get started for free with Brilliant's interactive learning. The first 200 listeners get the 20% off an annual membership after this free trial. Clicking on this link really does help Moore's Law's dad. It helps put food on the table for me. It helps put food in the bowl for Reese, And it helps you keep sharp. So try out Brilliant today. All right, so I've talked about the general opinion I have about Zen 4's performance, although I guess I will add this caveat that I do think is important. It's pretty clear to me that that one thing I said in my recent Zen 4 through Zen 6 update leak uh, that it's mostly from clock speeds than it is from IPC, it seems to be doubly true. And I would be lying if I said that I always knew it was going to favor it this much. I do think we need to prepare ourselves for the scenario that's quite possible where, I don't know, Zen 4 actually has somewhere between 7 to 9% IPC increase, but the all-core boost clock is like, I don't know, 20% higher than Zen 3. I'm not confirming 20%, but think about it. What do most Zen 3 CPUs all core boost to? Not 5 gigahertz. I mean, it's as far as my memory uh, recalls, which isn't very good right now, to be fair. It's like 4.5 gigahertz. You know, if you like really overclock it and do some crazy stuff, 4.6 or 7 I've seen. So if they get to like, you know, if they get all core turbo boost to even like 5.3 gigahertz, they're looking at close to a 20% all-core clock speed increase. And, well, then if you combine that with 5.5, maybe 5.6, 5.7 single-core boost, and, like, a eh, 9% IPC increase, well, you can see how the gaming performance can still get to uh, above 20% and hopefully close to 30% with some special models. Um, I guess I'll also add this here that's quite interesting. I asked a couple of my contacts about... Zen 4 with Vcash because, look, at this point, actually, I am still told that the initial performance expectations for Zen 4 versus Raptor Lake hasn't changed. So either that means that Raptor Lake is a bit weaker than expected, or should I say on the lower ends of my estimates. Again, I'd be quite surprised if it didn't at least get to 30% higher multi-threading, 8% higher single-threading total. I'd, I'd be pretty surprised, actually. Maybe that's what's going on. Or maybe there's just something else going on here with Zen 4 where it wins more in certain applications than you might expect. And again, that is why I think AMD kept it vague today. I don't think they want Intel to know when they're winning and how much they're winning by. Uh, but I guess on that note, though, I, I kind of got off subject there. Zen 4 with Vcash. Uh, look, I've already leaked Genoa X. Adore TV leaked Genoa X right after me. It's coming. Vcash Zen 4 is coming. And I asked one of my contacts about if if AMD really wanted to, could they launch it this year? And the answer is basically barely. So one thing I would say is that if AMD doesn't think they can beat Raptor Lake overall, they're probably likely to pull up Zen 4 with Vcash as much as possible. And they can't promise they will, of course. It all comes down to cost as well and availability, but... I think there's a decent chance we see that if Raptor Lake is a real killer. That's probably another reason why AMD's being so vague. Again, they they believe Raptor Lake's going to come out first, so it's likely to announce first. So if AMD just doesn't say anything that specific for another month, Intel will show their entire hand, and then AMD knows exactly what they need to do, what they need to pull up, and what they need to focus on. Uh, but yeah, that's most of what I have to say about the extra stuff about Zen 4. The other thing I will say, though, is the I.O. They, they keep talking about I.O., and I do think that is a major 
point with Zen 4 that they're going to emphasize because they know that Zen 5 is a bigger core count and IPC performance increase than Zen 4 is. Zen 4 is about establishing a new platform that doesn't kind of at this point have outdated IO. I'd say X570 really leaves a bit to be desired in how many NVMe drives you can support. Uh, I, I really think all of this is about having a good platform with tons of room to upgrade it over time with newer chipsets and tons of new features. And, and that's what they want you to realize you're buying into with Zen 4. Look, you're getting at least like a Zen 3 level performance increase, right? But you're also getting cutting edge IO and lots of it. Uh, and speaking of I.O., I'll throw this in there, too. I was told that recently AMD, and I mean recently, like, this past week, so, like, just now, if not <laughs> days, like, very recent, uh, AMD has been briefing board partners on B650 Extreme because there's really no reason why high-end B650 boards can't support some amount of PCIe 5.0 uh, for the graphics card. They absolutely could. So I believe there's going to be like a limited amount of high-end ITX and maybe a few other uh, sized boards that will have the full uh, bandwidth PCIe lanes, just like X670E. But they didn't show that off today, so I guess we'll just have to see. But no, there's no reason AMD couldn't make that board, and I'm told they just briefed board partners on that. Whew, all right, I'm falling asleep here. What else is there really to cover today? I mean, they didn't tease RDNA 3. They showed off uh, AMD framework for laptops. I don't have really anything specific to say about that, except to say that that is important. It's important that AMD keeps talking about an ecosystem, bringing unique features that leverage all of their, their IP and unique advantages together so that there's a reason to buy a full AMD laptop. You know, that is something they really need to start leveraging more. I don't know if I like the idea of pressure sensitive or digital WASD buttons because that can lead to weird backwards compatibility issues and forwards compatibility issues in some games, but I'm sure it won't be that big of a deal, I guess. And uh, yeah, Corsair is announcing a laptop. And I mean, really, besides all that, though, that new little APU AMD showed off. That looks really cool. That does kind of look like a six nanometer Van Gogh to me. At least I don't know why AMD wouldn't just do that because that would be a perfect small die, you know, a cheap APU to put out there with a perfect performance of quad core. It was again, guys, why not Zen three? Zen two is pretty space efficient with how much a little, how much less cash it has than Zen three. So I assume it's some six nanometer version of Van Gogh. Although I will say I have heard some people dispute that behind the scenes. So I guess we'll just have to see, but that's what it looks like to me. And, uh, Yep, that's going to just about do it. We've got an NVIDIA Computex uh, presentation coming up. Me and Dan will be covering it on the new Broken Silicon. Remember, if you support Moore's Laws Dead on Patreon, you can submit reader mails about the recent events and have me and Dan discuss it. Dis <laughs> oh my God, I'm falling asleep. Have me and Dan discuss it uh, on air and uh, also discuss this video with us after it comes out, although it'll probably only be on for five minutes after this comes out as I will be collapsing from exhaustion. But uh, yep, again, subscribe to Moore's Law is Dead, and thank you for watching.